My name is Michael and I have been a type 1 diabetic since I was about 11 years old. I'm one of over a million people in the US alone that's living with type 1 diabetes and every day we have to manage things that most people's bodies do for them. But what exactly are our bodies doing? Well, inside your pancreas, there are these things called beta cells that produce the hormone insulin, and this allows the glucose in your blood to enter your cells. But for someone with diabetes, that glucose can build up in their blood instead, which can lead to some major complications like nerve damage and even blindness. But why does the glucose build up in the first place? Well, it depends on the type of diabetes you have. For people with type 1, their bodies basically no longer produce any insulin at all. And that's because type 1 is an autoimmune disorder where the immune system destroys those insulin-making beta cells. And therefore, to make up for the lack of insulin, type 1 diabetics have to constantly check to see how high or low their blood glucose levels are, and if necessary, inject insulin into the fat under their skin. Well, this is my meter. Uh, this is what I test myself with. Typically, I test myself as soon as I wake up in the morning, and then about every two to three hours after that. I also try to test myself in the middle of the night once or twice, but sometimes it doesn't always happen because you get a little bit too tired. This is fast-acting insulin. I give it whenever my blood sugar is too high or whenever I'm about to eat a meal, uh, mainly based off of the carbohydrates in that meal. And this is my slow-acting insulin. I take a shot of this right before I go to bed, and that keeps me at a nice basal throughout the night and the day. But it's not just carbs that will affect a diabetic's blood glucose levels. In fact, if there's not enough insulin in their bodies, even protein can affect their blood sugar. That's because of a process called gluconeogenesis, which converts non-carb sources into glucose in the liver. There's actually quite a few other things that can affect your blood sugar other than just the food that you eat. Stress can actually be a pretty big one. I can count quite a few times that I've walked out of a very difficult test and had my blood sugar spike a little bit too high simply because of that. Exercise is another thing that can affect your numbers. Sometimes you go out for a run and your numbers are going to be too low. Other times you'll be pumping some heavy iron in the gym and the stress will actually make your numbers go a little bit higher. And even a few little simple things can affect your numbers too. Getting nervous over something, even getting a little bit too happy, getting a little bit too sad at times. Simple emotions can even drive your numbers certain ways. Different people feel different things, but for me, a high blood sugar is quite a lot like the flu. You get very heated, you feel pretty sick, and having a low blood sugar is basically very, very extreme hunger. Your hands start to shake and you also don't feel very good. Having to take shots of insulin, having to test yourself a bunch, don't get me wrong, that all takes its toll, but probably the hardest part about being a type one diabetic is just the chronic worry, the chronic stress, it would be so much easier if you could just take a pill every two hours, if you could just go to the doctors and then tell you exactly what you need to do, get on a cookie cutter plan. But as a type 1 diabetic, you have to walk a tightrope, always worrying about if your numbers are too high or too low, if you're going to feel good one minute, and then the next, your numbers kind of drive you into a downward spiral of sadness. To a degree, you basically have to live your life a little bit around the disease. Sometimes you can't do certain things, and you're not always fully in control. If you're like me, and you really try to take the best care of yourself, you can get in a lot better control, but true normalcy will always just be right out of reach. So now that you know more about what type 1 diabetes is, what can you do to help? Well, a great option is to donate to the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, or JDRF. They're a nonprofit organization that helps fund type 1 diabetes research, investing over $2 billion in research over the past 45 years. The hope is that with enough research, there will eventually be a cure for type 1 diabetes and better ways to treat diabetic complications. But don't worry, if you don't have money, you could donate your time instead, either by becoming a volunteer and working a JDRF event, or attending one of their One Walk fundraising walks. And also, you could become a JDRF advocate and help raise awareness among members of Congress of the financial, medical, and emotional effects of the disease. And an even simpler way to raise awareness for type 1 diabetes is to share this video with your family and friends and do more research yourself. I'll leave some helpful links in the description below, and I encourage you guys to go vote for JDRF for this year's Project for Awesome. Thanks, Thanks so, so much, much for watching, watching and don't, don't forget, forget to be awesome. awesome. Yay! <laughs>